Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.78, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about the two modes of Bitwig's sampler instrument. Before we do that, just a couple of things. The reason why we've left the sampler until the end isn't because it's the hardest to understand. In fact, it's actually the very easiest to understand. This is like the most basic entry level instrument of all. And you're going to see that quickly and also just in how much we actually cover. There's not that much to talk about. But the reason why the sampler is being put off until the end is because now with our knowledge of how to program the polysynth and how to program the FM4, we have the capabilities to come up with some really complex and interesting waveforms that we can then use inside of the sampler and further shape. Okay, I'm hoping that with future editions of Bitwig, they might make another sampling engine, one that's more powerful, a little bit more similar to Ableton Lives, because the one we have right now isn't really designed for sound shaping and sound sculpting. It's really the most basic sort of sampler that's going to be used to slice up beats or to drop in uh, your voice or some other sample and then be able to key track it to your keyboard. We'll talk about some other uses for the sampler throughout this series but for the most part very basic instrument and most of you already know what a sampler is meant to do and that's what this one does there are some problems with it and i'll talk about those there's one really big problem with the instrument that actually crashed my whole computer and uh, i'll show you what that was in maybe a later video so you don't run into the same problem i did but basically i got the max spinning wheel of death and there was no way i could stop so i had to actually physically shut down my computer and it slowed everything up it took like 20 minutes for me to open up bitwig again so i'll, I'll tell you what that is and it's something that you'd think would work and wouldn't cause that kind of a problem so here we have the sampler right now it's not in any kind of mode but you can see that there's a little backslash here and what i like to call the two modes of the sampler are single sample mode and multi-sample mode so if we just drag and drop a sound that we have we're going into single sample mode here and now if i turn this on i don't need this guy anymore well maybe i'll keep it for later but we can hear that these sound exactly the same, no matter where I'm playing on the keyboard. So that's the sound I generated out of the polysynth. I've dropped it into the sampler, and now no matter what key I play, that's what I'm gonna hear. The only difference is the amount of volume coming out, and that's because we have velocity sensitivity turned on. If I pull that down, identical. We're also not in mono mode, which means if I play two keys, we're just going to double the amount of power here. Or I could play one and then play one slightly later. And you can hear how those waves are being put out of phase, which is a pretty cool effect. A good thing to use if you're drawing in a MIDI clip and you want to kind of evoke that uh, subtle bit of detuning and stereo widening. You'll be able to do that uh, like so. But what we really want to do is turn on key tracking. So how do we turn on key tracking for our single sample mode? It's really easy. All I have to do is hit this keyboard right here and we'll be able to... But right now there is a bit of a problem. And what is that problem you may be asking? Well, I'm playing a C. And I must be playing C3 because this sounds like what our original sample sounded like. But that doesn't really sound too much like a C to me. We can pull the span on here and see what it is. And it appears to be an E. Okay, so the next and most important part of working in single sample mode, assuming you want to play in key with all the rest of your instruments, is getting this setting right. And you can read, it says the key at which the sample will be played back at its original pitch. And if we have a pitch sample to begin with, we want to get this correct. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull this up to E3. And now when I hit a C... It appears as though we are playing a C, which is what we want. And now we can play chords. Yeah. 
but you heard how all of those things were cutting off. So right now our sample is literally just playing back until the end and then it stops. And that's not very useful if we're trying to come up with something that's like a subtractive synthesizer. We'd like to be able to hold this down indefinitely and then have our own amplitude-based envelope controlling how we're playing. So what am I going to do here? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on loop mode. Loop mode is right here. And now what I can do is try to find a part of this waveform that I can loop. So I'm just gonna randomly set this in like so. I'm also gonna pull the end of the sample back to the end here. We can zoom in. Okay, so I'm assuming you're hearing that little click there. Now, in a lot of samplers, there's the ability to crossfade here so that we get rid of that click. Unfortunately, this is a very basic entry-level synth. We don't have that, so we have to try to fix that ourselves. And we could do it a few ways. First way might be by trying to change this loop length slightly. <laughs> All right, that's not seeming to work for me. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna try to zoom in on this really, really close. And this is very finicky here, so bear with me. And now what I'm gonna to look to do is actually set these at a point where it looks like the waveform is crossing over. Now, because this is a detuned instrument, getting rid of that click entirely is probably gonna be impossible, but we'll see if we can get it close. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the start, see if I can dial this in any better than that. I may not be able to because this is detuned. Okay, so there is going to be a bit of a click, a pop. Hopefully, we've got it to a point where we don't need to sustain a note for that long. What I did when I resampled this, and what you should do as well, if you are resampling something out of a synthesizer, is really hold it for a long, long time. That way, you can really control your envelope, uh, your amplitude envelope from down here. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. So this is the first mode. This is just a single sample in here. <laughs> that I can play back in key track. Now there's another mode, which is the multi-sample mode. And you're gonna see that Bitwig comes with a bunch of different multi-samples, and these all are going to load up in the sampler for you. I think every single one of these presets in here is a multi-sampled instrument. So we can go to keyboards, and we can look in here, and let's take a look at the roads, why not? And right away, you can see that something has changed. We no longer get a display for where our waveform is. Instead, all we have is this little um, navigation panel here. So we could go through and change the presets, but we can take a listen to this one. I'm 
not the most convincing roads in the world, but it will work and it has been resampled using multiple samples. So how do I know that this is used multiple samples? All I have to do is click edit up here and we're gonna talk about this in much greater depth. But what you're gonna see is right now I'm playing a C3. And based on how hard I strike the key, assuming I'm hitting a C3, it's going to determine which sample to play back. So what they've done is they've resampled an actual Rhodes keyboard and they've resampled it with somebody playing at different velocities. So if somebody hits it really softly, that's when we're gonna use and we can see the wave shape in there. If someone hits it a little bit harder, that's the sample we're gonna use a bit harder or full power. Okay, so this is giving us plenty of nuance to the instrument. What we can also see is the length that each sample is covering on the keyboard. So if I pull this down to a C0 and I start to play up the keyboard, we can see it's taken me quite a ways to actually get to the next sample, meaning that this sample here was put in at an E0, okay? So C, D, E, and it's tracking both up and down here to the F0 and back to the C0. Compare that to something in the middle where it's becoming a little bit more precise, and we see that this is now, the root is a C sharp three, and it's only playing in this very short range down to a C and up to a D. And that's multi-sample mode in a nutshell. So those are the two modes of the sampler. In the next video is we're gonna look at both of these modes a little bit more in depth and also talk about a few of the pitfalls that I think are kind of plaguing this instrument as of right now. Thank you so much for watching and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.